very much. Um, I just want to repeat, uh, because of the virus, all of our meetings will continue uh, on Zoom and will continue after the virus on Zoom. We, we might uh, meet at the library when the library tells us we can start our meetings. Um, but we will continue on Zoom. And we will probably continue uh, one or two, one, maybe one meeting a month at the library and maybe based on our members' feedback, we might consider doing the other uh, three or four meetings on Zoom. This has worked out very well for uh, all of us. The quality of the meeting is much better and uh, everything about uh, the Zoom meeting seems to be uh, very user friendly. Uh, we have meetings planned uh, today and for the next two weeks through the end of June. I want to welcome all the folks here today from uh, Australia, uh, London and Suffolk, England, Albany and Rome, New York, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, uh, Chicago, Illinois, Fort Myers, Florida, the villages uh, in northern Florida. Uh, Des Moines, Iowa, Midland and Saginaw, Michigan, Jefferson City, Missouri, Milwaukee, Houston, Dallas, Texas, Chicago, Illinois, and I'm sure we met, I'm sure we missed a few, and if we did, uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, the reason uh, that we are uh, what I consider, I think, the most active group in the, uh, in the United States is because of our outstanding, dedicated board of directors and our many, many, many dedicated members. To keep this schedule alive and well on a weekly basis is one tough job, but we are able to pull it off because of our dedication. Our speaker next week will be Jim Corsica. Jim, can you say a few words about your meeting? Can you unmute Jim? Are you there? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, next week I'll be uh, giving a talk about the uh, Apple TV, the 4K model, and uh, I'll be answering questions. And uh, I'm sure George is going to send out an email with my email address, so you can send questions uh, via email between now and next Wednesday. But it's going to address questions like, what is 4K? Uh, I've got a smart TV. Do I need an Apple TV? What is home sharing? How do I mirror? Uh, do you need an Apple TV? Uh, something I've just uh, started using a little bit is uh, the Voodoo app uh, and how it uh, combines with digital copy and how you can use your Apple TV this way. Uh, so all of those questions and more uh, next Wednesday for our meeting. Thank you, George. Thanks, Jim, very much. Um, we are now ready for uh, Mitch Breyers. Mitch is a uh, uh, expert on the Apple Watch, the iPhone, and the iPad. Uh, he's been a member of uh, Naples Mug for many years and a very dedicated member. And uh, it's all yours, Mitch. Thank you very much. Uh, just one second. Uh, I need to chip in here just for a brief moment. I need uh, you to realize we are recording uh, this meeting and that uh, makes it possible uh, to, for all of you to receive a copy of the recording later. But I just want you to know, for, and I think for legal re uh, reasons, I'm, I need to tell you that, that this, this meeting is being recorded. That's all I wanted, want you to know. Thank you. Okay. We're ready to go, Eckert? Yes. Okay, let me share my screen here. <clears throat> okay, so this is the uh, agenda for the meeting today. I uh, hope to get through most of these items. Uh, I did have about six or seven or eight questions that were submitted to me. Um, and um, actually took uh, quite a bit of time to, to research some of these. Uh, so I'm going to go over those uh, quickly. All the people that submitted questions, I have answered those questions 
personally and emailed their response to them. Um, so I'll start there, then I'll give you an update on the Apple Watch and what we know there and the, um, and the upcoming iPhone 12 series. Um, and uh, I do have some more information. I, I didn't last time I spoke, but there's a lot of leaks now on what to expect with iOS 14. And then we might cover a few apps and I wanna make sure that Sheeta reminds me at about um, 1230 to uh, stop whatever I'm doing so I can take Q and A on any subject uh, that you'd like, as long as it uh, has to do with the phone, the watch uh, and the iPad. Okay, so let me go to these questions. They're very detailed. I uh, put them out this way, so this way they'll appear in the video if you want to go over them in detail. But the first question was basically an individual that um, uh, had uh, the phone enabled on their Mac and, uh, and they would get a call on their iPhone and they'd take the call on the iPhone and they'd hang up from the call and then they were getting a message in the upper right hand corner that they had missed the call that they had just completed. Uh, and um, was wanting to know how to correct that situation. I actually uh, called Apple on this, uh, and they said it was likely a, um, uh, a, an issue with the Mac, not the phone, with the Mac and the operating system. They said uh, you might want to try rebooting. Uh, you also might want to uh, sign in and out with your Apple ID. Um, and that might resolve the problem. Lastly, it simply could be a software glitch, and that's what they that they told me. So um, that um, that was the first question that came in from um, Carol from the villages, and the second one was, what is the difference between AirPlay and ScreenPlay uh, situation? Attempting to uh, cast live streaming from my iPhone or Mac to the uh, TV. Uh, and that would describe mirroring. I mean, uh, live streaming meaning if you're watching a movie on your, on your iPad or iPhone, um, and then you would just go to mirror it on your, on your TV. Um, so, AirPlay is a little bit different. AirPlay uh, is generally used for music and other things like that, where you are um, you are streaming those to another capable Airstream device, such as an AirPod. Um, and I have not personally used. I don't have any devices that use Airstream uh, other than my TV, and I haven't set that up because I do have. Um, the mirroring and, and I do everything with the mirror. So um, I did send a very lengthy article uh, explaining this uh, to Carol and I hope that that um, helped her out. Um, then uh, she had another question. Let me see. Um, ah, text messages uh, received. Uh, the, the situation is, is that she receives a text message on her iPhone and her iPad, and then she starts, uh, then she gets, she has her iPhone open, and she gets a response to, from the reciprocant of her text message, and it doesn't chime on her watch. And the reason it doesn't chime on her watch is because she has the phone open, and she's using it for the messaging, and uh, it recognizes that, hey, you're on the phone, the phone's open, and um, so we're not gonna send you an alert on the watch. We'll send you an alert on the phone, but not the watch. So uh, I did verify that with Apple, and I also verified that with our in-house expert, uh, Sheeta, and um, that takes care of that one. Now, the next question um, 
had to do with um, uh, had to do with updating your uh, iPhone uh, software and and other software such as Catalina. And the person asked me uh, if I had if I used Catalina, if I had downloaded it, uh, what I thought about it. And uh, basically, the answer is Catalina has received mixed reviews. Uh, some people really like it. Some people have had issues with it. Most of the issues have to do with the fact uh, that it only runs 64-bit um, uh, software. It does not run 32, so you might find some of your old software that is very valuable to you, has not been updated, will not be updated by the vendor for whatever reason, and that would be an excellent reason to not update to Catalina or to have uh, an operating uh, system, whatever the one was before Catalina, I lose track of all these names, um, uh, on another device or another partition where you could run that old software and not lose it entirely. There is a, um, a site you can go to. Again, uh, Sheeta uh, uh, gave me this site and we've talked about it in other meetings. If you Google Go64, you'll get a list of items that will not be compatible with uh, Catalina. Now, that being said, uh, and with that caveat, which is a big one, I always update when new software comes immediately. A lot of people don't like that idea. But my feeling is that there's a reason for those updates, particularly on the, on the watch, the, the phone, and the, the iPad. And um, the, the reasons generally outweigh not doing the updates. And when I hear people, and I just heard, I just had a call from a friend uh, the other day, uh, and I, I think he's in the club, but not very active. And he said, is it okay for me to update to, um, iOS 13 on my iPhone. And I said, well, I've been on it for uh, almost a year now, so I think it's, I think it's okay. Um, again, that's how I feel. I feel when those updates come through, there's no reason to hesitate uh, other than maybe a week or so to see if something hits in the blogs that says, oh, we made a mistake. And that does happen. They just released an update uh, on the iOS software where uh, it, it was causing some um, problems with VPNs and they're working furiously to correct that. So that's my answer there. Um, now, how to change signatures on your email. This person wanted to, uh, all kinds of different signatures. Uh, I, want, I want to send this signature for business and I want to send this signature for friends and this signature from New York and so on. Um, you can only have one signature assigned per email account on an iOS device. However, you can have multiple signatures if you're doing it from uh, the computer mail app. Uh, I do not use that app, but it was pointed out to me that uh, that capability is there. But unfortunately, you're, only, you're limited to one on, on each email account. Uh, so if you had two or three different email accounts, uh, you could have different signatures and just use different accounts. Um, uh, but other than that, there's no easy way to do it on an iOS device. Uh, okay, can you access smart email boxes from your iPad or, or um, that you've set up on your laptop? And the answer is no, those don't come through. Um, and how do you access um, articles for reading um, on your read from your reading list and how do you delete them? I was going to demo that real quickly. So let me get to that. So I'll go right in here into Safari and I'll go into um, Gonna have to block that stuff out, George. Uh, I'm gonna go into my reading list. And so let's say that um, I wanna find one that I can get rid of. 
Okay, let's say that this one right down here the, on health, I wanna get rid of. Uh, first of all, the way you get them is you go right here to the eyeglasses. You, you, first of all, you, you start off by, um, you start off by hitting this book up here at the top, the top uh, left-hand corner. So you hit that book and then you hit the eyeglass area in the middle, then you, this is where they're saved. So you would hit on this and, and it would bring up that site and you would start reading it. To delete it, you just swipe from the uh, right to the left and delete it and it's gone. So that's how that is done. Okay, uh, then I had one more question from that individual that he sent in right before the meeting and it was a simple one, so I'll address it. Uh, oh, he was talking about uh, dictating text in emails and he said all of a sudden it'll stop and I'm still dictating and it stopped and it hasn't even told me it stopped. Well, unfortunately that's the way Siri works. I think you have about 30, um, seconds of dictation time in in Siri. Um, can you confirm that? Uh, can it, uh, Sheeta? I know it's limited. I cannot confirm the exact time. I know that if you are talking at some point, it will time out if you pause for too long. Yeah, it does. It won't, and it won't keep on forever. It will eventually. It'll just stop in mid sentence, even if you're talking. And I think it's about thirty seconds. I never did quite understand why they limited that um, and didn't make it much longer. Um, but that's the answer and it doesn't give you a big alert that, hey, it stopped you. Because I found myself just talking on and on and it's, oh, this thing stopped three sentences ago. Um, so that's the end of all the questions. And um, so with Mitch, that- Mitch, yeah. can I have you go back to Safari, back to the reading list? Um, yes. Question. Yes. If you click on the upper right corner, if you click on the rectangle with the arrow pointing up, please. Yes. And that's where you add to your reading list. You see the add oh, yeah, to reading that's, list. Yeah. That's where yeah. you add. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. So you if are. you're on a site and you want to add to it and uh, add it to your reading list, that's where you do it. And um, the um, and, and as you can see, I there's a, quite a few things that I've kept in my reading list. Um, I find it quite handy. And and if you want to delete, if you're on your iOS device, you can just swipe from right to left, and you can delete items yeah. from your reading list. Yeah, I, I went over that real quickly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me get back in here. Um, Okay, so we finished the questions. Are there any questions on the questions? We do have a question from Alan and Barbara. Alan, can you please unmute yourself and ask your one question? One, yes, okay. <laughs> uh, I use an old iMac and the best you can get is High Sierra. Uh, and I'm wondering if High Sierra has any security updates that protect me uh, against bad people, or do uh, or or they stop updating anything on High Sierra? I I cannot answer that. I'm not really an expert on those uh, computer operating systems, but somebody else might have an answer. If you are using uh, the High Sierra operating system, if there are updates, they will come to your computer and let you know that there is an update. It won't try to ask you to install an operating system that your computer cannot use. But so if they don't, uh, you don't know whether they are continuing to update High Sierra for security reasons. You, you have no idea about that. I don't because I'm not on High Sierra, but it will, if you go to your preferences and I, it's, there should be something that says check for updates and no. you would be able to check and see if there's an update for High Sierra. The other thing you might want to do is call Apple uh, Technical Support. They could tell you an answer to that pretty, pretty quickly, hopefully. 
I got an update this morning. <clears throat> Alan, Alan, I believe that uh, uh, the answer is yes. As long as those operating systems still are out there and being serviced by Apple, they are up, 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 updating them for security reasons. Okay. Proceed? Yes. Good. All right, so I want to move on to the watch, and there's, there's really not too much new there in terms of what is rumored to be uh, happening with the watch um, uh, six this fall. Uh, the key features will be, hopefully, uh, sleep tracking, longer battery life, uh, pulse ox oximeter, oximeter, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that, to that. And that, for those who don't know, measures the oxygen in your blood. Um, there'll be a new chip, an S6 chip, which will be faster and less power um, or more power efficient. And there will also be a mental health um, uh, notification system built in. And a lot of people uh, wonder how that's going to work and what's gonna, what they're going to do. Apparently, is they're, they're always monitoring your heart in the background. They're monitoring, um, in this case, they'll be monitoring your uh, blood oxygen level. And when things start to get out of whack, with you, with your heart rate, your oxygen level, maybe some other things that they're looking at, they're gonna send you a warning and say, hey, you might be uh, ready to have a panic attack or you might be, something else might be going on with you and you might wanna check. So that's about all they've said about that in the rumor mill, but it, apparently it is coming and that's the way it was described to me as the way it would, would potentially work. Any questions on the watch at this point? Will probably not come out until October. Normally it comes out in September and they're talking about the, the watch and the phone now being pushed out at least a month because of the virus. All right, I don't see any questions for you Great. on the watch. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, uh, I, I, I had to confess up to the group, uh, I, I'm, I mean, I've been searching for a 12-step program for um, uh, Apple Watch uh, band addiction. Uh, I bought this case that holds my uh, bands. Um, it holds, uh, it has 33 bands in it. And uh, once I loaded it all up, I, I, I decided I definitely had a problem. And so, and I know, I know that I see some smiles out there, but I know, wow. That there, wow. I, know people, <laughs> I know there's other people in our group that have this problem. So uh, I'm looking at, to, to hopefully um, get into a 12 step program that'll um, alleviate that, um, that issue for me. Okay, moving on to the phone. Uh, I've shown these slides before, everything that I'm reading uh, indicates that this is still what's coming. You're, it's going to be uh, the same type of charging uh, port uh, that we currently have uh, on the existing phone. will be on the new phone. They're not changing that. Um, and then on the camera, there'll be three cameras and uh, the, the fourth thing that looks like a camera is a LiDAR sensor. Uh, and what a LiDAR sensor is, is that like when you're doing your face ID and you're swirling your head around like this and it's doing a 3D image of your head is what it's doing. Uh, that's what a LiDAR sensor does, only this one will work from 12 to 16 feet away and will help with a lot of uh, augmented reality type things. Um, I, there was one rumor I heard this week that that was not coming, but it was only one rumor and it hasn't been confirmed by anybody. So I've got to think that this is still uh, expected to be out there. Hopefully it will be. I think it'll be a nice feature. Uh, so there'll be four models introduced. Oops. 
That's not showing. Why is it showing? Well, nice. Oh, there it is. Four models will be show, uh, will be introduced. The white model over to the, the, the left is the small phone that they just introduced. And then the new phones will be um, uh, the 12, uh, the smaller 12, and then that's number one. And number two will be the 12 that is the same size as this year's 11. Uh, two cameras on each of those. They'll they'll operate uh, in the same manner. Just uh, one will have a bigger footprint than the other one. The third and fourth models shown are the Pro line models, and uh, they are the ones that will have the lidar sensor uh, and and enhanced cameras. And one of the things on the cameras that they're going to do is give you uh, 3x magnification rather than the current two, uh, which will be a nice improvement. And then the last one there that has the time of 947 is just the um, blue. Uh, there's a new color. It's going to be blue. That's going to replace the green uh, this last year. And that's just the other side, the front side of the phone. Um, so all that is Again, the rumors have remained the same in the last month on on that on all those items. Um, so here are I don't know why these slides are not changing real quick, but they're not. So I have to wait for it. Any ideas on why those wouldn't change, Eckert? Just uh, here we go. Here you go. Okay. So here they are again. Here are the four. The first two will be running on uh, 60 uh, hertz, uh, and and that's what we have today on all our phones. And the Pro line is supposed to go from 60 to 120 uh, periodically. Now that's been up in the air as to whether they're going to release the 120 because it's a real battery drain. Um, so we'll have to see um, whether that comes about or not. And uh, initially what they were talking about was it was going to automatically change to 120 when it was appropriate for the application that, that uh, the camera was working on. But they're having, they had some technical difficulty with that. And so then the last, uh, uh, Bit of information we had is that well it'll run on 120, uh, but there will no there won't be a, a variation. In other words, initially it was going to go from maybe 10 up to 120 whenever it needed to be increased. Now they're saying it's either going to be 60 or 120, um, and so if it comes out, that's what I expect will come out. They will all run on 5G. They will all be 5G capable if you're in an area that gets 5G. Uh, they will all have five nanometer processors, which is up from the um, 7.5 that we had this uh, last year, over several years, uh, seven, seven nanometers for the last several years. That'll be a great improvement in processing speed and, and again, reduced battery drain. Um, there will be a from what I'm reading, there'll be a difference in the 5G. Um, there's three levels of 5G, and, it, and it's all dependent on the provider. Um, and the Pro will be capable of picking up the highest level of 5G. Uh, the, um, the lower two models will not. Uh, and that high level is problematic because you got to have towers that are very close together. And I don't imagine you're going to have much 5G availability anywhere uh, uh, with any degree of, of reliability um, um, 
for the next year or two. It'll be very spotty. So that's, uh, I think, which just doesn't want to change for the slides, but that's, that's it on the phone. Uh, are there any questions on the phone? I think that Wayne Mertz had a question that may relate. Uh, Wayne, would you like to mute yourself and ask your question? Yes, Mitch, um, I've switched from uh, Verizon to Xfinity Mobile. And um, I was trying to reduce the data so I could pay less. And I can't, I, I can control everything except this one system service called Documents and Sync. Every time I turn the cell on when I'm outside the Wi Fi, I get a big download of Documents and Sync and it blows my plan so that I have to pay the big bucks. Do you know if there's a control, and this is not an easy question, but documents in sync under uh, system services seems to be a, a something I can't control. I don't know if you have any understanding of that. I, I do not, but I, I was under the impression that you could uh, limit uh, download activity to only when you're in a Wi-Fi area. Yeah, yes, but well, some of the benefits of the phone are when you get outside and I want to use maps. Uh, but what happens is when I turn on uh, the cellular, use an on off button for cellular data, it mm -hmm. automatically downloads all the documents in sync with, I think it's with iCloud. I turn the iCloud off on the phone and I still get this download and it can be as much as a gigabyte of information uh, and throws and it'll begin to throw me into the next the higher bracket i i do not have an answer for that is anybody else familiar with that i'll keep searching uh you know what wayne i would call uh apple support and ask them as well I mean, they they won't they won't want to go into um, your carrier's stuff. But if you can say, how do you how do I turn this off to stop? Or, or and and you might not be able to. It, it might be that once you turn that on, everything comes down. I would think yeah. you would be a way to stop it, though. Okay, I'll look into it. Thanks. All right. I th I think Victoria had an answer possibly from. Uh... Good morning, Iowa. Maybe we can unmute her. She has to unmute herself. Um, yeah, I think somewhere in the settings, I don't have my phone, so I can't uh, look for it, but I think there's a setting that basically says, and it's under cellular, I think, it basically says uh, you can set it not to do uh, downloads if you're not on Wi-Fi. And I think it's in it's in the settings cellular area. I don't know exactly where right now. I There's can research this. it, but I can't do it now. I, I am in, Victoria, I am in that, and there is no switch for documents in sync. You know, you can flip the green switch to off, all except for documents in sync. Oh, okay. Well, if I find the answer to what I remember, I'll uh, share it and let you know. Thank you. Okay. Move on, Sheena? Yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, so, I'll, I'll stop, I'm sorry, you have a question from Michael Slider. Michael, can you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah, I, I think I have the answer to the last question about the data. I use Xfinity uh, Wi-Fi as well. And I understand the problem. I'll tell you how to get to it. There's two settings that you need to change, if I can give you that very quickly. When you go to cellular, the first thing that you need to do is to click on uh, cellular data options. 
And if uh, the first one that comes uh, the on that you see, it says low data mode, you can turn that on. That's number one. And then number two, where it says roaming, mine is set at voice and data. If you click on that, you can go to where it says data roaming and turn that off. And that, that will stop the download of data. And you can read the notes on it and see if that applies to you. And that should solve your problem. You may not be able to, to use an app like you want to use Google Maps if you haven't downloaded the data. But if you're on, if you're on uh, Xfinity and you pick up an Xfinity Wi-Fi cell, you should be able to download it for free. Mike, if you get a chance, can you document that in the discussion group? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, Mike, the only thing I'm not seeing is I, I see that roaming option. When I go into there, I see that I see the data roaming. And when I turn that, I can turn that on. Um, I can turn on low data mode, but I, I'm not seeing anything about the documents. Well, the, do the documents won't get downloaded when you shut those off. Oh, you shut off low data mode? You turn on low data mode. Turn on that. And then on the, on the data roaming, you turn that off, and that should stop the download of the documents. And the problem that you may have is uh, if you haven't downloaded like updates that you need for the GPS stuff for uh, maps, uh -huh using Google, you may have a problem. If you switch to using Apple's Maps, you won't have that issue. Okay, but if you have an unlimited plan and you're not even approaching where they're gonna start, then it doesn't matter. But on the unlimited plan, you're paying at least $45 a month. If you do it by the gig, you're only using $12. So it blows the $12 uh, gig, $12, $12 plan for one gig at a time. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sheeta, proceed. Proceed. Good. Okay. Uh, iOS 14, finally starting to hear some things about that. It will be released uh, to developers, and I am going to sign up again this year as a developer. Um, so I will be running this in another two or three weeks. Uh, and here, here are some of the more prominent um, rumors uh, that we're hearing. And I just have to qualify by saying these are things that we think are going to happen and show up. But you never know for sure. So um, Apple could allow you to set your default browser and mail um, apps. So uh, in other words, you wouldn't be necessarily um, confined to using um, um, their proprietary apps. You could use the ones that you decide you want to use uh, as defaults. Um, that was the first one. The second one is they're going to come up with apparently a, an enhanced uh, fitness app. It'll be similar to uh, like the Fitbit Coach. I'm not familiar with that, but I got an idea of how it does work. Uh, and it might be a paid service or a paid app that'll provide users with uh, guidance during workouts. Um, and depending on how much that costs, uh, I would be glad to do it for a cheaper price. Just contact me directly. Um, <laughs> then on Safari, um, on the Safari page, there's uh, a lot of talk and chatter that there'll be an automatic feature to translate to a different, from a different language to English or from English to a different language and it'll be done internally on the phone or iPad by a drop-down menu at the top. So you won't even be you won't be going to a uh, a Google Translate or anything like that to do this. It'll all operate internally, 
uh, and a lot of people um, who use more than one language or get emails and, and or websites from other languages and other languages, I'm sure that this will be a, a good addition for them. And because it's all done on your device, uh, it'll be all private. There'll be an, a new finder um, type of an application. And I think this is gonna be great. Uh, and I've got a, a picture of that that I wanted to show uh, on down here. So on, like on the watch, you can choose a list view of your apps. And so what they're talking about is that on the phone and on the iPad, you'll be able to choose a list view and you'll probably, there's a lot of talk that you'll be able to change the view in two or three different ways. Like one way might be uh, all the more popular apps that you use will appear at the top of the list um, and, and things like that. So uh, this to me would be a, a real welcome addition to be able to see your apps and list view and just um, run down and find them real quickly. So that is something that's been rumored and I hope that that comes about. And um, then uh, that, that was the last one. Um, the, also, the, the actual operating system for the phone and the iPad and the watch should be um, more stable because they've made some internal changes at Apple <laughs> in the last year that lend themselves toward a more stable uh, development of the operating system. So we'll see if that comes to pass, but that would be a very welcome uh, improvement. And so for right now, that's about all I'm hearing on the uh, iOS 14 enhancements. Again, uh, uh, their development conference starts in, uh, I think, about the 22nd, 21st or 22nd of this month. And a lot of this stuff, a lot more information will be available at that time. Any questions on that? on the uh, operating system for the um, iOS 14. I don't see any more questions regarding that, but this may relate. Martin Kelly, would you like to unmute yourself and ask your question? Good afternoon, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Good, good afternoon all. Thank you for inviting me to your, uh, your, your uh, uh, meeting today. Um, I just wanted to ask about the iPhone. I missed your, your introduction because I was late. Um, if it's running on 5G, um, will it self uh, uh, search for 5G or can you, will you be able to turn that off? Because I'm concerned that here in the UK we have very limited 5G and I'm just concerned the phone would waste a lot of battery and energy hunting around for, for 5G services. And I was wondering, if, do you think or do you know if there's going to be a, a switch that you could turn that off? I don't know that there would be a switch that you can turn it off. I know if it's not available in your area, it'll default to uh, LTE. It, it'll, uh, it'll just default to LTE if you don't have it available. But to turn it off, I have not heard of anything about a switch to turn it off. Why would you want to turn it off? Because of the battery drain or the cost? Because of the battery, yeah. Where, where, where I live out, out, out of London, um, there is, there'll be no 5G coverage. Um, and as I, as I travel in and out, certain areas may have it and certain areas might. Um, but for me, I'd more likely to turn it off permanently because I don't want it to be wasting energy searching around for something that's very little availability at the moment. Yes, and I have not read anything about the ability to turn it on or off. That's a good question, but nothing in, nothing at all. That, and I've read, uh, I've probably read a hundred different articles on this stuff over the last few months, and I have not. That's the first time I've heard of that uh, type of request. So I don't know if that'll come or not. It's a good question. I know that uh, the five G does take uh, more battery juice, but I know that they're working on addressing that. Um, 
So, can I do a follow up on your iOS 14 bit that you've just done? Sure. Um, do, do you know um, how backwards compatible uh, it could be with, with previous phones? It's going to be backward compatible all the way back to the uh, iPhone 6S. Uh, they're, they're not going to drop, from what I've read, and uh, this has been confirmed by multiple sources. That they're usually they drop one or two phone models every year from support. This year they're not dropping any. So uh, okay. if you've got a 6s, a 7, it'll it's going to work fine. It might be slow, but it'll apparently it'll work. Uh, and I know I know it was great to be in your meeting the other day. Could you please salute us with your um, Guinness mug there? Come on. I, I, it's not here. I've, I've, I've actually have no drink at the moment. I, um, I was resting from work, char charged up the stairs and sat down as quick as I could to join in. So no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I have no Guinness and I have no, not even a mug of tea. So I'm sorry, I can't oblige at the moment with that. All sorry. right. Thank you so much. Uh, um, let me just say one thing. Mitch uh, has agreed to take over. Uh, I think you can fit about 30 in your jet. And we'll be over when you have your first meeting back in the pub. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be great. You'd all be welcome. Whether you'd all fit into our tiny little pub downstairs where we have our meetings may be another issue, but we could always expand upstairs into other parts of the pub. You'd, be, you'd all be very welcome. And any of your members who are ever in London, we, our meetings are always the uh, second Monday of the month. Uh, you'd all, all and every one of you would be very welcome. All right. And if I ever get over to the States, I'll, I've, got, I've got a dozen mugs to go and visit, so it'll be great. Oh, that'd be Thank great. You, Good Thank you. Sheeta, anything else? Yes, Victoria, can you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Sorry about that. Um, I was wondering if the phone under iOS 14 will be using 5G, but 5G is not available. Does that mean it would automatically default back to 4G, which might be available in an area? Yes, it will automatically default back to the previous whatever you have. I mean, just like right now, it, 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 it works on LTE, and if I go to some places, it, it, it says it's on the lower system from LTE if I get in an area that uh, doesn't have, which rarely happens anymore. But yes, it'll just automatically come down. Okay, thanks. Uh-huh. Okay, Mitch, proceed. Okay. Okay, this doesn't seem to like me. Well, okay, here we go. So one of the things I wanted to go over uh, was an app called Single. Uh, uh, it's a free app at the App Store, um, and you'll see what it looks like. And uh, it does provide end-to-end -end encryption. Um, the the uh, catch-22 is, is that whoever you're sending a message to also has to have the app downloaded. Uh, and uh, iMessage does provide, I didn't know this, but they do provide end-to-end -end encryption. So you, you really don't need that feature if you're using um, iMessage uh, because you already have end-to-end -end encryption. But it also allows you, they just released a version that allows you to, uh, to blank out faces on photos and to also um, blank out other things by drawing on the photo. So I wanted, I got a little demonstration video on how that works. And I did it that way be, just so we get it documented in, the, in this system. So that's gonna play uh, now. I wanna show this single app, which is the app in the bottom row uh, of apps. Well, 
Mitch, we don't see it. I want to do this single app, which is the app in the bottom row. Hold on a minute. Uh, I don't know why we tested this out earlier. And, All right, uh, we see the screen now. Let me see if I can get it to play. app, which is the app in the bottom row uh, of apps. It's not playing, Mitch. On the hand side. So it's I'm not playing. It, it's it not is, showing on. It's it, not showing on the screen. At the top. It's not. There, no. It, no. Top left. Okay, uh, I don't know why, because it's showing when I'm mirroring. It's showing. Wonder if I'm still mirroring. Yes, I am. Does my screen show now? I see your, I see your screen. Is this your iPad or your computer? iPad. I see your iPad. I see your cursor move. Okay, and when I go here, I see you click on photos. Oh, I got to click on photos on the iPad. But you right. don't, you don't we, see, see, we see this. Uh, it looks like you're about to take a picture. The screen see, popped up for taking a photo. You see a black screen. It says cancel. We see a button. We see a couple of icons. Now we see your gallery of stuff. Okay, so then let me. And, and let I me, see your uh, I see your movie in the gallery. Okay, so do you see it? It says welcome. Yes, welcome to Signal. I see that. Okay. Can you hear it now? Left. I want to touch on that. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Then, Good. what I want to do is at the bottom, second one up from the bottom, where it looks like two mountains, that's your photo library. I'm going to press on that, and I want to select a photo. And the photo that I want to select is this one right here. And so we'll select that. <clears throat> and now what I want to do <clears throat> is show the blur function. And I have it marked in yellow or in green at the top. You hit on that. And then right at the bottom in the middle, it says blur faces. I'm going to hit on that. And everybody's face is blurred except for three people. Now, I don't know why those three people weren't blurred, but sometimes, particularly in a photo with a lot of faces, it'll miss them. So you'll notice underneath the blurred faces, it says draw anywhere to blur. So I'm gonna, first I'll get this guy in the yellow, just go over and touch his face. Then I'll get the guy in the middle with the sunglasses, touch his face, and then the lady on the left. Now they're all blurred. <clears throat> now, also, you can blur other things. I can say, well, I don't want to show what they're drinking. Um, so, I'll blur that out. And then you can erase things in the order in which they were blurred. And the way you do that is at the top, on the right hand side, the second item, that arrow, you hit on that. So, when I touch on that once, you'll notice that these coffee cups, I'm just keep on hitting it will reappear one by one. And now the faces will reappear. First the lady on the left, now the man in the middle, and then the man in the yellow shirt. And then if I hit it one more time, all the faces reappear. So that is how that works. Now I want to go and get out of here and get back to, uh, let's go back to the library. And I wanna unselect the one I had. I wanna select one with text to show you that. So I'm gonna select this one right here. I'm gonna pull that up. Now I'm gonna hit the blurred item again. That's at the top next to the double A's. If you hit the blurred faces, nothing happens because there are no faces to blur on this photo. But if I draw, I can blur, I can draw things. So I want to draw 
get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. And then I want to get rid of this whole line right here. Okay. And um, now, again, I'm going to undo each of those. And you undo them in the order in which it was done. That's the only way you can do it. So I'll hit that arrow next to the uh, check mark up there. First, first the big line will come out. Then the one on the right will come out. Then the last one, which was the first one I did, will come out and we're done. So that is how this works. Okay. And I want to show you this. Um, any questions on that? I don't see any questions on Signal. Okay. So I want to spend, I, I, I know I just have a few minutes left. So I want to talk about a couple other apps. Um, this uh, DuckDuckGo, which is a search engine and an app. Um, I've started using that and uh, I used it a few, uh, it, the, the big reason you use it is privacy. They don't track or record anything unlike Google. Uh, so it's, it's very private and that's their claim to fame. Um, and in fact, I just read an article this week, uh, uh, somebody suggested, suggested that that would be a great app for Apple to buy. Uh, whether that ever happens, I, I don't know. But in any event, um, it's a good app and, and you can just select it as your search engine. Uh, it, to me, a, a few years ago when I tried it, it, it didn't seem to work nearly as good as Google. Now I notice very little difference. Sometimes Google will provide a few more things than, than DuckDuck, but it's pretty transparent. Um, and if you want to switch back and check, uh, if you're not getting the right uh, uh, search results, you can always check real quick in Google uh, to, uh, to do it. And the way you set this up, I want to show that real quick, is you go into settings and here at the bottom, right there, and you go into uh, Safari, uh, where's my Safari, Safari, Safari right here. Okay. And under search engines, you'll see DuckDuckGo. Now, if I wanted to change it back to Google for some reason, I just go right in here and check Google. So that's how you, uh, Set this up as your default search engine. And, and when you search with that, uh, if I go to a, a new search, let's just say I wanted to search um, Naples. Uh, golf. And I'll close out the so it, it just, it looks just like Google. Uh, but the nice thing when you use this is that I won't get, I won't start getting emails and everything else about golf because it's very, it's all private. So I wanted to just show that quickly. And I think the other one I'll mention, cause I want to leave time for, for Q and A is I started doing some podcast um, work this week. And I'm not a, a big fan of podcasts because these people uh, love to hear themselves talk. And they usually go on for an hour or an hour and 15 minutes. And I just don't have time to listen to that. But I did find three technical uh, podcasts that come out daily. And uh, they last for 15 minutes. Ten to five, they last anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes. And they just give you a summary of all the technical stuff that was announced uh, that particular day. And so um, I'll show those real quickly if I can get into it. Uh, I don't know if I have it on my iPad or not. 
Yeah, okay. So if I go into here, these are the three nine to five daily, uh, daily tech headlines and uh, uh, tech me ride home. And they're all very short. So like I was listening to this one this morning and um, uh, you can see there's one each day and they're not very long. Five minutes was that one and, uh, and so on. So I, I've started to listen to these on a daily basis just because they're short and they do give me a good uh, quick summary. So any questions on that or DuckDuckGo? Uh, Dale, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes, uh, with regard to DuckDuckGo, I've been recommending that for our privacy browser as well. But when I get the question of how do, well, how do you really know they're not collecting my personal information, I'm, I'm at a loss to prove it. Well, uh, I'm at a loss to prove it as well, other than the fact that, I mean, I get an email from them every day talking about their privacy and, um, and their, if you, if you go into reviews about DuckDuckGo, all you hear, one of the things that you'll consistently read about is the fact that privacy is their big, um, their big uh, name in the game. And, but I don't have any definitive proof of that. Does anybody else want to chime in on that? Well, uh, Mitch, have you found that uh... If you're searching for a camera or a uh, case for your iPhone, that you don't get 30 to 50 emails after you've uh, searched? I, I do not. But as soon as I search, it's really funny with this, you know, of course, Google owns uh, Instagram. If I go on Instagram and I pull up something on, which I did just the other day, I pulled up something on uh, my addiction, I, uh, uh, iPhone um, um, straps and um, watch bands and uh, I was looking at them, turned it off, went into Facebook and all of a sudden these ads are popping up from the same outfit on, uh, on watch bands. Uh, and so if I go into DuckDuck and start looking at watch bands, I do not get that kind of activity, I don't get emails or anything else. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Lucy, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Okay, um, could you please show the podcast apps again so I can take a screenshot? Sure. We'll also be sending you a uh, link to a video. Everybody that attended this meeting and all of our members uh, can go to our website. Within three or four days, I'll have the video of this meeting. So these are the three short ones that I found. I, I didn't spend a lot of time searching, but uh, I, I just happened to be reading an article and they were talking about uh, the fact that there were a few of these that were really short and they were pretty good and concise. And um, so like this one's 20 minutes long. This one, um, let's see if I can, let's see. This one, uh, the first one is five minutes right there. This one's uh, four minutes, 11 minutes. Um, so, uh, Let's just see if I can go down. No, I can't. Um, so, um, Mitch is twelve thirty-five. Here's a bunch more, and you can see that this this particular one, the Daily Tech headlines, they all seem to be anywhere from four to six minutes long. Um, the um, nine to five. Look at all of those. Uh, those are five, six, six, where I'm seeing these times is right here. 
So they're very short. And uh, these are, the ride home's a little bit longer. Uh, the ride home, um, those seem to be 15, 19 minutes, 18 minutes. Mitch? Minutes. Yes. It's 12.36. Okay. So uh, I hope that helped you. And I hope you got, I hope I had that screen up long enough. You could take a screenshot. Those are the three that, and of the three, the first couple are the ones that are the really short ones. And you can do these on any podcast uh, app. I just particularly like uh, like uh, this one, which is uh, the Overcast, and it's free. And so uh, we'll just open it up to any questions on anything iOS, watch, um, iPad, iPhone. Okay. Stephen Ramirez, can you ask your question, please? Going back to 5G, could you verify something that I heard uh, about a year ago, that when 5G is deployed, as it comes out, the carriers will be charging an extra fee if you select to start using the 5G feature? There, there has been talk of that. I haven't read too much about that lately. Um, but there has been talk last about year when I up, last year when I upgraded, I'm in the upgrade program for the phone. And last year, the Verizon rep said that next year, meaning this fall, they were going to assess $20 fee on your bill if you started using 5G. Yeah. Um, they might do that, but I don't know how they're going to do it because it's not going to be widely available for two or three years particularly Verizon, there's three, there's three types of 5G. And uh, I explained it uh, this way uh, the last time I talked on this. If you think about taking a train from Philadelphia to New York and it stops 10 times uh, on the way to New York, that's the first level of 5G. Um, if you take a train from Philadelphia to New York and it stops twice, that's the second type of 5G. And then the third type of 5G is an express train from Philadelphia to New York. Uh, I know Verizon is trying to go the express route. And the problem with that is that it requires more towers. It, the, the faster the 5G, the, more, the closer the tire, tow, uh, towers have to be. Now, these towers for LTE can be, I don't know, a, a mile, two miles, three miles uh, away from each other. For 5G, if, uh, I mean, I've heard a thousand feet for the fast, for the real fast, uh, maybe even less than that. So they're going to have these little things on telephone poles or uh, light posts or wherever all over to get it spread out to where it's really. Um, uh, what has widespread usage. So I don't know how they could charge for something that, you know, uh, you're paying $20 a month and you can only get it when you're next to a tower and there aren't that many towers yet. Can I say something? Yes. I think it'll be a, a supply and demand. I think in the very beginning, they'll get away with charging. But as soon as all the carriers are into it, it'll be a very competitive issue and the prices will probably go away. I would think that that could be correct. But, and again, I don't know how they're going to charge for something that isn't widely available. And uh, now, if, as you get down to that lower level, which is where AT&T and uh, T-Mobile and so on are, are going to be at, where it's going to be maybe twice as fast as LTE, that's going to be much more widespread because those towers can be a little further apart. Uh, they might get away with some kind of a premium charge, but I don't know that I'm going to pay it. I mean, I'm happy with the speeds I'm getting with LTE right now, and I'm certainly not going to pay $20 more a month uh, for something faster. Good question. That's why I think it'll be a matter of, you know, whether they can get it or not get it and how the uh, public responds. Right. 